Cheers, man. Cheers, bro. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Welcome to the Holy Arms. You're watching Enemy. I'm Andrew Trendle. Are we here with Youngblood? Yeah, we are. How are you doing? Good, man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for inviting us. Of course, man. Of course. Nice rainy day in Camden. Yeah, well, it's quite fitting we're here because uh, I saw you've been sharing your memories on Instagram uh, as of late. Yeah. And um, you shared your World Enemy Awards after party. I yeah? did, man. Yeah. I did. That was like, that was crazy. I remember that. It was like, that was the first award show we got invited to. Yeah. Ever, you know what I mean? Um, and I just think, I think so, I, all I wanted to do was just, if I fucking won, just like spend it with them and have a mad night. You know what I mean? It was cool and we rode a, we rode a tube up, which was not the fucking best idea to eat and we had a mad night. It was crazy. Because then you have to change to get from Brixton to eat. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Stockwell. <laughs> yeah. Stockwell. Change, Victoria Light and Stockwell and then change to get on up here. It's good. And uh, well, what happened? Because it looks like you tore the place apart. I'm yeah, like, it was mental. Yeah. I, I remember like, they actually got pictures of it in, on the middle floor of it. It, it was a bit more mad than I expected because you don't know like every time we've in the history of like done mad shit which is loads of stuff I've just literally put in my phone like here's the location turn up to it and then I kind of look, look at someone on my team or I'll be like do you reckon people are going to come and I was like I think people will come and it was mental yeah it was like ran the old pub had a mad night um, it was sick and they fucking let, lit they let you back in let me back in. I think they actually like it. I think it's the only fucking pub that'll let you fucking go mental in it. Put beer on the fucking walls and you well embrace it, you know what I mean? Well, it's like, I mean, I was thinking that if you were to kind of crack open your head and empty out the contents, it'd look a bit like Camden. I think so. I've, <laughs> I've come to Camden my whole life, you know what I mean? I think like, I remember coming here from about six or seven, because my old man used to work in London. He used to bring me down on Saturday because he had guitar shops. And he used to fucking work in the shop, and on the way out, he would purposefully drive me through Camden because yeah. he had the big fucking shoes and piercings, and I was obsessed with it. And he used to come here like every Saturday on my lunch break and just be like, whoa, buy a spike belt, buy a corn t shirt, buy a trivium t shirt. Yeah, man, it was cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, good Chinese food too. Banging Chinese <laughs> food, literally. So like, there's like one, um, there's that one in the river as you went out as well. Um, which is like on a barge, which is fucking mental. I can't remember the name, but it's sick. Yeah. Well, we'll get on to the big announcement yes. in a minute. But you've been talking a lot about kind of taking stock and figuring out where you're at. I mean, what's kind of led you to that? I think, to be, to be brutally honest with you, it's the first time I've actually realised what the fuck has gone on. I think from being like 18 years old and starting this thing to last year, at the end of last year, Christmas, it's been like, I've just kept my head down and kept running. Yeah. Like I've never actually been like, oh, whoa, what the fuck? Like we played Wembley Arena last year and I wasn't even there yeah. in my head. Do you know what I mean? I was like, we got Paris tomorrow and it was like, wow. And I think all I wanted to do was just kind of play a gig, meet people, play a gig, meet people, play a gig, meet people, play a gig, meet people. And, um, and it's kind of been the first moment where it's like, whoa. And, I've actually kind of taken stock on like the good bits, the really bad bits, the fun bits, the crazy bits and kind of sit, sat down with myself and be like, all right, what do I want to do next? Because 27 next, yeah. and I've been doing it since I was 18 and it's like, whoa, you know what I mean? And I think um, it's, been a, it's, been a, it's been a fucking, the most unbelievable, it's like a fucking movie what's happened. Like I could write it down, it's, it, yeah. it's mad. You can't plan it either. <laughs> You can't plan it. I think I think that's the that's the funny thing about us. It's like a lot of people don't know that it's just me and my mates and fucking ten iPhones. Yeah. The, the whole time since been eighteen years old, I fucking love the Clash. I love the Pistols. I love the Damned. I love Susie Sue, and I basically just studied fucking what what how they belonged somewhere when they were like back in the fucking late 70s early 80s and and just put it on an iphone yeah to connect to people and it just was like it's been mental up to this point to kind of just be like fucking hell wow this is this has got bigger than any of us have, has ever expected and um how the fuck do you deal with that i think we just needed to take a little bit of time off and be like all right what's the coolest thing we can do next what's the thing that serves our fan base the most and what is the thing that kind of always remembers the people because 
that's what it's always been about since the beginning like me meeting people and loving them yeah uh, and hoping they that lo they love me back you know what i mean well that's it i like how you've always used the word cause remember we spoke the first time we spoke was uh, around the time 21st century liability came out and even then you were using the phrase community you would never say my fans you'd well, be like family yeah, yeah. community yeah. I, I think i think fans put you on a pedestal yeah. and i don't like that i think like i like i have such a weird thing I, I just wanted to all my life i just wanted to be a part of something i never felt like i did yeah i just wanted to fucking be like oh I, I i was even if it was a small piece in something i just wanted to be like oh i was there or that was sick even when i would like saw gigs i was like oh i was i was there you yeah. know what i mean I, I felt like i mattered to something mattered to something and um i feel like it's the hardest thing in the world feeling really small yeah it's really fucking dark and all everyone wants to be be like is seen and that's completely like if you don't you you know what i mean it's like people want to be seen for who they are mm. and um i just wanted to build a space where it'd be like you will meet people here who will be like yo i feel like you that's sick yeah. or whoa I, I didn't know i didn't know that I, you dress like that or i didn't know that you like that too even if it's outside of young blood yeah you know what i mean it was like it just was more about creating a space even more than the music in the beginning the music was just kind of a vehicle to be like here's something that you can go to yeah. to find each other and then it, then it's like it kind of got really fucking big and we were like oh shit and then it, you know what i mean it's mad mad well that's it i mean take us back to doncaster before you got any music out but you you've obviously you've always been a dreamer yeah 100% yeah but like how did you, before you had any fans, how did you imagine them? How did you, how did you envision that community looking? And is it exactly what you thought it would be? I think you always, you always want to play Wembley Stadium because you saw Freddie Mercury do it. Yeah. But you don't fucking realise what every step of the way is like to get to that point. Yeah. And whatever um, people say about us, we, I, I, I can say wholeheartedly that me and my guitar player, my best mate, we've worked our fucking bollocks off. Yeah. Because it, I can't wait. I wish people could watch it in like a fucking 20 second. You remember that Black Mirror episode when you go inside someone's eyes yeah. and you can see it? We've just like had to hustle the whole time yeah. because I remember being in Doncaster, leaving because it was just not, I couldn't have been in a band there. You yeah. know I mean, it was just not going to happen. I was like, we played the Leopard, we played the Vintage Rock Bar, we played the sick venues, independent venues in Donny, but all my mates would come and it'd be, you'd just basically sell tickets on the door, wouldn't you? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, literally like notepad and, and literally like 250 in and then you'd get given a little fucking piece of paper yeah. or a stamp. And um, I came down to London, I met, I met me, sorry, Lager, I met my guitar player in Phil Taggart's night yeah, yeah. in uh, Slacker Night in Old Street and we were literally both wearing Arrington's and I was like we literally looked like black eyeliner black trousers I didn't even have the sock, pink socks on then I was like eyeliner creepers trousers and Harrington I was like what the fuck you know that Spider-Man mean <laughs> and we just we were literally inseparable since then and um, we just I, I literally fucking we lived in South London and we just thought about this whole thing and dreamt about it and then nobody wanted to fucking sign us or write about us or whatever. And we just fucking went to America. Something happened. We, it's, it, I can go into that, it's a mad story, it's for another time, but it was like literally went to America because it was our last chance. My manager was like, someone's heard you on a radio, you're gonna go and play a, a guy's fucking gig night yeah. in LA because it's not happening here. Let's just fucking give it a shot. And we had a meeting with an independent label out there. And basically, I went via New York because one of my managers was from New York. An Irish guy called Emmett Power used to work for the fucking management company. And this guy can get you in anywhere. Yeah. I'm telling you, this guy can fucking talk <laughs> his way into anywhere. He talks in any party when we were living in a squat, stunk like fucking damn. Like Jedi power. Do you know what I'm saying? Literally. And basically... I went to New York and I was going to write with a guy whose studio was inside the Universal building. So we got the Irish guy to pretend 
that he was a f- my fucking drummer. Because when you go into a Universal building, you get given a fucking pass yeah, yeah. that expires after 12 hours. And basically, is he would ride the elevator all day and be like, yo, you heard this fucking young blood kid, yeah, <laughs> blowing up out of the UK. Total bollocks. Utter bollocks. But you know what the music industry is like? Some fucker starts talking about a name and everyone starts talking about it. Completely lied. The old fucking Universal building starts to pop into the studio. I'm like, why are these people popping into the fucking studio? <laughs> then the West Coast is about it. We go to America. Every fucking label under the sun's at this fucking thing out of complete and utter bollocks <laughs> alone. Like this Irish guy's been chatting shit in a fucking lift. And then I, I basically was there with my mates. We fucking snuck into America. Like, so funny getting through customs. Like, why you got two guitars, sir? I'm like, uh, just fucking gone on a road trip, want to play fucking music or whatever. And then I threw up. The guitar player was like, let's play any fucking gig. And we got signed in America and then nothing fucking happened for seven months. And we just kept doing it. And I remember the point was like, the reason why it's all about community is because for some weird reason we were big in the Netherlands. Yeah. I don't fucking know why. It's always the Netherlands or Belgium, yeah. Netherlands <laughs> and Australia. Yeah. We were fucking big there for some weird reason. When I say big, we'd sold out 100 tickets. Like yeah. Anywhere else we could sell 10. But like in the Netherlands, we were like fucking, I don't know, Lenny Kravitz or some shit. We were like, fuck yeah. And then uh, we went there and I remember just picking up my iPhone and someone saying to me, why don't you just fucking talk into it for fun? Just record yourself. Don't have to go anywhere. All your songs are about politics or expression or individualism or anything. Why don't you just fucking talk about it without anyone there? Just get weird in your fucking house. And I started to do that. And I remember like people started following us on like, I remember getting a hundred views on my story and be like, what the fuck? (laughs) hundred people have just fucking seen us. Do you know what I mean? Like no, literally like a hundred people have just seen us. And then we went to Amsterdam and then I would just like go out into the line and talk to people in the line. And then, that turned into a thousand, and then we went to Belgium the next day, and sixty people, probably forty people, came from Amsterdam, did the, did the same thing, and now that turned into ten thousand, that turned into twenty, hundred, a million, four million, and then yeah, that's how we fucking got here. It's mad. That's awesome. All from chatting shit in a lift. Yeah, all from chatting shit in a lift. <laughs> Honestly, it's like it's fucking hilarious. I can't wait for if ever, anyone ever fucking can be asked to do a film about us one day. It'll be mad to yeah. go into it. Who would play you? Um, ooh, fucking hell, who would play me? Barry Keane has got the same nose as me. I can see it. At the minute. I so can I mean, see it, yeah, Put yeah, him yeah. in a smile and tell him to grow his hair. Yeah. About my height as well, I think. Yeah, and he loves getting his kit off as well. So I love it, man, same. <laughs> <laughs> um, but a really good scene in the movie will be the next one. This yes. is a tasty segue, by the way. Yeah, it's crazy. It's a tasty segue. Queen, David Bowie, Green Day, Linkin Park, Youngblood. What do they all have in common, Dom? They played a gig at Milton Keynes Ball. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I know, that's fucking mad, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. I think, I think I kind of... Bloodfest is happening. Yeah. I'm launching my own festival. Um, I had the idea to do it uh, probably about November last year, so late. I just was fucking insomnia one night and was like, you know what? What's the next thing we can do that is really a staple and really just fucking pushes the boundaries. That's what it's all been. To be honest, this whole thing's been about fucking with people. Yeah. yeah. Been about like, <laughs> when press don't write about us, when labels don't want us, when fucking festivals don't take us seriously, when people don't take my generation seriously, let's just fucking poke the bear. Yeah. Every time, piss everyone off and get away with it because we're a community. We're, we're going to do it anyway. Bigger. We're going to do it anyway. Yeah. And I was like, wow, why don't we do that? And I was like talking, I was like, you know, where could we do it? We could find like a thing and then, and then, and then people really got excited by the idea of the joke. And they went, do you know what? Let's do it at Milton Keynes Ball. And I was like, what? Because <laughs> I have that picture of Bowie in the yellow suit. Yeah. I think it was 83. I can't remember. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong. And I remember Bullet in a Bible, Green Day. Yeah. And I was like, what? We're going to do it there? They were like, yeah, we think we can do it there. And uh, yeah, it's fucking happening. What are you going to wear? I don't know yet. I've got to think about that very carefully. You have a few costume changes. I think I've got, uh, got a few costume changes. Um, but at the minute, it's like, I'm really, in, I'm really excited to kind of, I think we've been on the road for five years. We've been fucking everywhere. And I'm really excited to lean into the Britishness at the minute. Yeah. And I think this fucking country needs a bit of a kick up the arse. You know yeah. what I mean? In terms of like, 
just mad concepts. We're all very set in our fucking ways. This is how you do this, and this is how you do that. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it, we're going to keep it really UK-themed. Kind of try and bring a bit of fucking unity and love back to the Union Jack. You yeah. know what I mean? And fucking try and redefine it a little bit. Because it fucking feels like a load of bollocks at the minute. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, and like I think, how Britpop did it. with. Yeah, uh, I, I think so. And it's all about unity. It's all about love. And it's all about a place where people can come to. I think, like, with Youngblood, we... We dreamt of a world five years ago. Now I'm going to physically fucking build one. Yeah. And it's like, this is going to be a place where you can come to and be utterly yourself with your mates, with your family, with your friends, even if you're completely on your own. If people don't know who you really are, you're hiding it. Yeah. Come to fucking Bloodfest and do it. And like, I just get really like buzzed off the fact that people are going to find relationships, make friends there. I think it's all about just community and unity for and creating a festival that's all about the people and yeah. not fucking corporate i think because we have we are probably we have the best festivals in this country but i think as they get older they get staler and yeah. they get less about the people and they become more about the transaction and more about the they just become a bit fucking dated and i just want to like vibe out a bit and yeah. i just want to create something fucking cool and yeah. Well, let's start with that lineup. Uh, yourself, of course, yeah. it's going to be good. Lil Yachty, Soft Play, The Dams, Nessa Barrett, Lola Young. That's awesome, man. I mean, crazy. How'd you land on that? I just wanted it to be completely artists that I think are real. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? A lot of, you know what I'm saying? I think no matter what, a lot of people, whatever people say, we are fucking real. Like, we are literally person to person. A mute, like an artist built on like, hello, I'm Dom, what's your name? But there's fucking 10 million of us now, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I think I wanted to find artists that, that are like that. Lola Young's one of my favourite artists at the minute from this country, I think she's rad. I think she's got her own thing going on that's different and weird and really, I think it's like a really exciting time for British music, you know what I mean? I think like from Central Sea to Lola Young, like it's actually like, moving yeah, you know yeah. what I mean and it's globally been like whoa that's cool I like the accent when it's so funny I've been to America so many times and everyone's like oh no you can't sing in your accent or you can't do that thing I'm like fuck off you know what I mean it <laughs> yeah. gets thicker um, Little Yachty I think he's like in his respective genre he's trying to do what I'm trying to do like push the boundary as much as possible other people like it or not I had an idea to do the icon slot of like um an artist we kind of pay homage to why this community kind of what inspired it in the first place and like the reason I got the white streak in me is because of the damn do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean I've got them in my house and um, I think like every year about what is it about 7.30 I think so it's like like 7.30 or 7 o'clock we're going to have an, an icon oh club. like Glastonbury Legend slot but yeah, yeah, basically yeah, yeah but my own and it's like we're going to icon slot and then uh, in, in, in right about seven o'clock and then Yachty then me yeah and it's gonna be sick I think Nessa Barrett's amazing I think she's a, um, a songwriter for a new generation it's gonna be sick and there's many more to come as well but yeah. I just think like I just wanted something that transcends genre is defiant as fuck it's all about inspiration and imagination and just a celebration a unity between artists people it's going to be sick. It's yeah. going to be mental. And my plan is eventually to take it worldwide. Oh, wow. But um, it had to start in the UK. Yeah. And it's going to be, like, hopefully, I think I know it is, it's going to be like something that no one's ever seen before because my mind is mental. Yeah. My head's mad. And I wanted to kind of put that into a physical world. When you walk through those gates at Bloodfest, you are walking into like a physical manis- manifestation of young blood. And it's fucking, you can touch it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Instead of like, Look about it, look it on the internet, read about it, you can physically fucking hold it. All those acts you just mentioned, they're like, they fit in that Venn diagram, it's a bit spicy, you know, it's like... Yeah, it's a bit fucking naughty. Yeah. It's a bit like, yeah, doing their own thing, like, not beholden to anything. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, man, that's what I do. I know how hard it is. Yeah. Because I know, I know either people don't want to give you a, um, a fucking leg up because you're too dangerous. Yeah. People don't believe you. People think it's fake, or people just think you're a little bit too loud, and that's what I've experienced by, yeah, by yeah. some fucking miracle. 
been able to try and get somewhere. So I'm like, I'm going to look at artists and be like, you're real as fuck. Come and play this because I think my fan base or my community, my family are going to like you and yeah. you need to be heard and what you're saying needs to be heard. Yeah. And I think like it, it's, it's going to be cool. It's like proper festival where it's like cut the bollocks and just come together. Big collabs on the night? Probably. I think like I've got mental ideas. To be honest, that's the lineup, but some people are going to come out that are going to be legends for yeah. my set, for other people's sets. Like, I want it to be like, it's mental. Like, who, who I've got coming out of me is fucking mental. Give us some clues, go on. Um, glasses. <laughs> <laughs> glasses? Who's got glasses? Answers yeah. in the comments. In it. Um, but tell us about sort of the, uh, the rest of the experience, because it's not just, you know, you've, you've got some community kind of oh, events 100%, going on. 100%, like, yeah. my, my idea is, like, to have, I, I'm not going to give it all away, but, like, my idea is to have, like, we're going to have a make a friend tent. Yeah. That's like a massive tent in the middle of the festival. If you want to make a friend, go in there. So people can be like, you know what, I want to make some friends and I want to connect to people. All you've got to do is be inside that tent and then you're approachable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you want to go make some mates, if you want to go create experiences, if you want to do something, I'm just like, why? we're going to do loads of crazy shit like that. There's going to be loads of stuff like looking back on what Young was done. We're going to start, we're going to have a blood burger there, which is going to be fucking mental. Oh, what's in that? Just gonna be like fucking horns on the back, branded like a cattle, <laughs> uh, devil horns. It's gonna be a vibe, and we're just gonna. It's it's gonna be full of like experiences that make people like connect and kind of encourage you to express yourself, or not. You can just walk around and watch people doing it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. gonna be all about. It's all about. It's all about that. I mean, I went to Glastonbury and I loved Glastonbury. I yeah. think this that festival is fucking amazing, and I think I kind of wanted to, to kind of take a little bit of inspiration from that. And that is all about the people, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And I think I wanted to create my version of that. Yeah. We're taking the Holly Arms to the, to the festival. Oh, so you're going to be propping up the bar all night? We're literally building <laughs> the Holly Arms oh, in wow. Milton Keynes Bowl. And I'm probably going to be at about 4 p.m. watching bands and fucking pouring lager. And then I'll probably like, at seven o'clock, I'll fucking go have a shower, wash me winky, and get ready to be fucking young blood. Yeah, it's gonna be fucking mental. But what's the capacity on that then? That's well, we can do between thirty to seventy thousand people. Oof. So we'll see. That's amazing. And to see that many people there manifest, it's got to like just make you feel sort of invincible, unstoppable as a I, unit. I just feel like that's that's the thing. It's like if you love young blood. Ooh, police car. Oh, is it? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, if you love young blood, if you hate young blood but are kind of interested, if you've ever had anything to do with young blood, if you've loved it at 15 and outgrown it, if you've come to it older, if you've come to it, it's like I wanted to sit. I want to signify it's going to be here forever for you. Yeah. I am not ignorant that people come and go to fan bases. I've done it to to many artists. It's like, but I want it. Youngblood to be a constant in people's lives that when you want to turn to it to feel that feeling again yeah. that this is it's, it's there all the time and I want to do this every year Yeah. no matter what we do like I hope everyone comes that old fest like, yeah, you know what I mean I hope yeah. everyone comes and I hope it's a crazy thing but it's just like I want it to be a place where you know what like once a year I can go to a place and be all of myself. Yeah. And then I, it might get me through. Yeah. And then, I, do you know what? I know it's happening next year. And I know it's going to happen the year afterwards. And I know it's going to happen the year afterwards. And I want people to come from Italy. I want people to come from Spain. I want people to come from <laughs> Latin America or whatever. And that's why we've kept the tickets as, yeah. as low as we possibly well, can. Well, I was going to ask because ticket prices are getting pretty mental. I mean, yeah. 60 quid. That's a yeah. bargain, man. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. 60 quid, 10 or more bands. That's it. And it's like no ticket fees, all in. Yeah. Because I hate going to a site and being like, oh my God, all right, cool, 45 quid. And it's like 20 quid plus f f plus 10 quid on top. I'm like, no. I'm like, that is it. That's that's the vibe. We're not we're not even making money on the, like, we're, like, we're literally just doing it for the fucking tunes. Yeah. And it's like, that's it. We got it as low as we could. And um, I'm excited. It's like, all of it is about, again, saying thank you for this moment. Yeah. Um, for being here with me and it's like a physical thing where it's like I've had so many arguments about the price point but I was like that's it that is literally it that's 
that's yeah. what we're doing and it's like 60 quid all in 10, 10 plus bands and it's going to start day event don't know where it's going to go in the future hopefully it'll be whatever but it, it's a good it's a good starting point and I was like we wanted to do it in Milton Keynes because it's one it's an iconic venue it's yeah. halfway between the kind of the north and London easy to get to last trains are going to be easy I've literally thought about everything I was like yeah, yeah. How much is it? Can I afford it? We're going to literally put like some of my favourite artists plus me on for 60 quid. How am I going to get there? Milton Keynes, last trains are running till an hour and a half after I got off stage. Um, and then who am I going to go with? And I think a lot of people get like frightened, um, like, oh, I've got no one to go with because yeah. I like Young Blood, but two of my mates don't. Yeah. Uh, but it's like, we want to keep the tickets affordable. So like, oh, just come anywhere, you might like it. Uh, or, we, we're just going to advertise on my Discord. Join my Discord, meet friends. Like, I'm, are you going? And then it's like, connect with people and meet them on the day and have a mental experience. I think it's like, we just wanted to create something that's literally like a young blood no-brainer. If you like young blood, or come, come down, you know? But that's what I mean. I mean, you're just being your true self, telling your truth. People that kind of recognise that truth are coming to you. So I just wanted to ask, like, when something like when like the other the, like the other month when Matty Healy had a go at you, or when people take a pop at like certain parts of your community, yeah. have you got a thick skin? How does that make you feel? And I don't I, honestly, I don't really care. I just think like that old that old seventy five thing was funny to me. Yeah, you know I mean a lot of my, a lot. It was quite funny because the, we were in Manchester Arena, ironically. Yeah, and uh, that whole thing happened, and I just found it funny. I was like. It went on a little bit too long. That's why I found it funny. Yeah. Because I fucking, I, I like, I like the dude. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I fucking, I think he's a bit of an idiot, but I like his fucking tunes. But I just found it funny. I'm like, it was a, it was a pretty cool thing. I was like, fuck it. Yeah. I like some fuckers talking about me. Cool. Yeah. And I, I thought about it for like two minutes before I went on stage and then never thought about it again since. Yeah, that's it. And it didn't escalate think, to like legendary beef. <laughs> no, I don't think so. And I think, to be honest, I think if we saw each other at a party, it'd be like, all right, you fucking dickhead. And well, that's like, it. I mean, right. you stand for a lot of the same things. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. just like, it's funny. And it's like, I think that's a thing about being British, innit? Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, like, people like me, people don't. And that's just what you get. I used to... Honestly, I'd be, I'd be lying between the ages of 22 and 25 if I was saying it didn't get to me, because it really did. Yeah. And I think kind of this year, having a little bit of time out for it, be like, it's all bollocks anyway. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's all fucking entertainment. And, um, and I'm just having a good time. I love my community. I love my fucking music. Like, I love it. I fucking do. And that's all I've ever known up to now, and it's got us to here. And um, tell the truth, fucking lead with your gut, love people, and I think you'll be all right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's just my motto. Well, that's it. I mean, when you started teasing it, you said, um, in order to move forward, you've got to look back. And this feels like a very, very tidy way to kind of end a chapter. Is it the end of a chapter? Like... It is the end, end of a chapter. I think yeah. kind of going into new, new music, which I can't wait for you to hear. Like, again, I'm 27 next, and I think kind of, for a character like me, or whatever, it's either fucking death or rebirth. Yeah. And, um, I feel like this point has been amazing up to now. I will never lose what it's about in terms of young blood, in terms of the soul of it. But musically and everything, like the next album is a, is is probably it's something I've been working on for two years yeah. that I've not shared yet, and um, it's a fucking adventure. Yeah, it's a full concept that you can play from start to finish. What can you tell us about that arc of that? It's been made in England. Uh -huh. It's been made in the north. Um, and it's it's all about it's it's kind of like I flip the narrative where I've sung about darkness, and this album is the light. Yeah, and it's all about getting through it, and it's positive, and it's that thing, it, it it's that thing in your stomach that you feel when you listen to Oasis or The Verve or Bowie or Suede or Madonna that you just like. I don't know how that makes me feel, but it makes me feel like I can get up today. And that makes me feel like I'm invincible and it makes me feel like I can do anything. Yeah. That's what this new album sounds like. Stone Roses, Amy Winehouse, everything that has kind of fundamentally um, done work on my soul. Yeah. 
everything up to now has been about your heart and your head and making sure that you're educated, making sure you use your voice, making sure you ma making sure I really, you know what I mean? Making sure I use my head, use my voice, speak from my heart, meet people, um, be fucking loud, be bratty, be unapologetic, be crazy. And then this is a bit like, all right, what is me? What does me like soul want to say? What do you feel like at the, in your fingertips? You know what I mean? When you stick on Live Forever or you stick on Valium Skies or you yeah. stick on uh, Screamy Delica, or you know what I mean? It's gonna be a, it's it's an album that's that's tr that's gonna definitely fucking reach for yeah a gr be a great like Urban Hymns or like Screamy Delica, and I know fucking the old dudes are gonna. Um, leather me in the comments for that but I don't give a fuck because I'm <laughs> I'm gonna go there and I think if you fucking listen to it um, it's that from a new perspective yeah so if the world is a bin fire you're kicking the bin over and being like let's fucking go yeah That's 100% it. Yeah. and I just think it's all about unity and all about love in another way as opposed to like fuck you this is the world we gotta get to it's about like nah come together look each other in the eye yeah and like fucking be human man yeah and are you going to use Bloodfest to kind of launch it, or is this? Is that, I feel, that feel like, like I feel like it's um, Blood. It's it's all a little master plan. I yeah. think it's kind of creating. Like I got loads of songs. That, I mean, I, I, in the past year since my last album, I think nothing's like it's. I've been experimenting and just dropping songs in real time. Like Low Life sounds completely different to Happier. That's completely different to hate. It sounds completely different to when we die. Can we still get high with Yachty? Yeah. It's all just been about like where do I want to go, or just having fun with with it. And then the kind of the the um, the answer came of, you know what? I'm gonna make this album I've been trying to make for two years because that's the fucking truth. Yeah. And that's the truth. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, when I shut my eyes and fucking clench my fists and go, what do I want to do next? And me and me fucking heart I mean gut gets to speak to me as opposed to like what should I do next or what could be beneficial or whatever all that bollocks that comes in when you fucking an artist trying to go like holy shit we got to this level how do I navigate um I think I'm just gonna there's a mixtape of songs that I've written that I love that might not make any sense but I think are fucking sick yeah, so yeah. I'm just gonna drop them I think go into the go into Bloodfest and start fucking, I mean, in the meantime, create a fucking opus. The next album is an opus. Is it your Black Parade? It's a fucking, it's a Tommy. It's yeah. a Quadrophenia. <laughs> it's a Night at the Opera by Queen. It's a Black Parade. It's a, it's a the Urban Hymns. It's a, a thing that's intended to be listened from start to finish that um, has pushed me harder and fucking made me gut myself harder than anything else before. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, it's it's crazy. We locked ourselves in a studio in Leeds and just felt, as opposed to like just shut the world out, as opposed to what's popping on this, what's the what's the state of art or whatever. At the minute, it's like no, fuck that. This is it. Could this album have been written fifty years ago? Could this album have been written in fifty years' time? Yeah. Fuck everything else. When was it created? I don't know because it's just it, it just is. Yeah. And I think that's the goal. And I'm buzzing. It yeah, takes I'm, balls, man. Like. It, it, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> I just think, like, fuck it, because I've always led from truth, and I've always, like, we've got fucking further than we ever thought we would get. And I can say that because it's like, I, I don't even get it. I'm like, I'm down. It's all about each other. Yeah. So, like, fucking everything else is bonus, so we may as well just try it. Yeah. And just try and reach for fucking Queen and try and reach for Bowie and try and reach for the Verve because I don't think they even knew at the time what they were doing. Yeah. And, and fuck it, we'll, we'll just, I hope people like it because it's fundamentally probably the most truthful I've been able to be since 21st Century Liability because 21st Century Liability happens and then the whole fucking world gets involved and holy shit. And then sometimes you've got to shut yourself off. And again, I've checked this album like I've, I'm not, I've just started. Yeah. You know what I mean? Born again. Fucking yeah, to be <laughs> religious about it. <laughs> South Yorkshire's answer to American Idiot. You could call it Donny Idiot. I don't Donny know. Idiot. Hundred <laughs> percent. Name in the movie too. Dom, thanks thank so you much, brother. man. Thanks for Cheers, having bud. me, man. Thank Appreciate you, you guys. Cheers. Cheers.